It's an ecological disaster that could starve the world and enslaves thousands of boys. This is America Uncovered. I'm Chris Chappell. Subscribe to this channel and turn the notification bell on so you can be the first to watch our new episodes each week. So if I were to ask you your favorite food, you might respond with something that's native to where you're from. For example, if you're from Italy, you might say pasta. If you're from Beijing, you might say dumplings. And if you're from Northern California, you might say gluten-free, vegan, sprouted, ancient maize flakes. Yes, there's a market for that. But there's at least one food that is common in virtually all cultures that live near water, and that's fish. But as the world's population grows, the ocean's population of fish gets smaller. Overfishing could lead to widespread starvation. According to UN statistics, nearly 90% of the world's marine fish stocks are now fully exploited, overexploited, or depleted. And when there aren't enough fish, they don't reproduce fast enough to create more fish, leading to a downward spiral of fishlessness. But how big a problem is this? Can't we all just eat something else instead of fish? Like the mcfish. There's probably no fish in that. Fish accounts for at least 17% of all animal-based proteins consumed by humans. In developing countries, that number jumps to 26%, which just goes to show you that, wow, that's a big fish. Anyway, the ocean isn't just a key source for humanity's food. It's also a key source for humanity's income. About 100 million people across the globe rely directly on fishing for their income. And 200 million jobs around the world are believed to be connected to the fishing sector. By the way, that number doesn't include all the fans of fish, which is limited mainly to the band members. And my roommate, Carl, at 3 a.m. Anyway, developing countries are the core of the fishing industry. 97% of fishermen and 54% of the overall fish-related trade are in developing nations. That's why the sustainability of the world's fish habitats is critical to the people in the poorest countries. The huge demand for fish is posing a threat to the poorest people, and the future availability of fish as a food source. So how did we get into such a precarious place? The answer is about as depressing as watching Schindler's List on a first date. Sorry, Karen. One thing that's led to the overfishing crisis is government subsidies that were meant to help. The United Nations says that fishing subsidies are estimated to be as high as $35 billion worldwide, of which $20 billion directly contributes to overfishing. Some of the $35 billion in subsidies goes towards sustainability. And the United States is actually the world leader in sustainability. Go America! But the majority of government fishing subsidies globally go in the opposite direction. Things like building bigger fishing boats, tax breaks on fuel, and better fishing gear. For example, the European Union has reintroduced subsidies to help fishermen build new vessels and modernize old ones. According to one study, initiatives like this do not ensure sustainability of the stock nor the industry they are intended to support. They allow fisheries to continue to invest in themselves while the stocks are being diminished by overexploitation. But don't worry, it's not just government fishing subsidies that are making things worse for fishing, there's also environmental pollution. For example, motorized ships pollute the water, especially small bodies of waters like lakes and rivers, and that hurts fish habitats. Badly planned hydroelectric dams can often destroy fish mating cycles. And used fishing gear, especially plastic netting, is the biggest plastic polluter in the world's oceans. Wait, what? It's not plastic straws. Why am I drinking out of a paper straw then? Why don't we make fishermen use paper nets instead? And if that isn't enough, there's also mercury. Mercury pollution comes mainly from coal power plants and the gold mining industry. Mercury seeps into the water and gets concentrated in fish, especially fish that eat other fish. This giant fish is actually made entirely of mercury. A study published in the journal Nature 
finds that human exposure to mercury leads to neurocognitive deficits in children that persist into adulthood, with global costs to society that exceed $20 billion. Too much exposure to mercury can also lead to severe psychological problems, such as Bohemian Rhapsody. And if the problems of fishing subsidies and environmental pollution weren't bad enough, there's also the issue of human rights abuses. But before we get to that, we're going to pause here for an America Uncovered mental health break. Here's a video of a Pomeranian. Ah. So there's a black market for fishing that involves human trafficking. The high seas are a place where anyone can do anything because no one is watching. Movies might portray international waters as a place where rich kids can throw killer bachelor parties with unlimited debauchery. But in real life, international waters are a lot less fun, especially for the tens of thousands of men and boys each year that are essentially slaves on fishing boats. Job seekers from poor countries are tricked into taking jobs aboard fishing vessels where they're held for months, sometimes years, with low wages and dangerous living conditions. And because they're out to sea, it's hard for governments to stop this kind of thing. Illegal fishing is big business. The illicit seafood trade, some of which involves this type of human trafficking, generates an estimated $160 billion in annual sales. So are there any solutions to the overfishing crisis? I suppose that fish could throw a benefit concert to raise money and awareness, but I think there's been enough human suffering already. The UN has already committed itself to curbing the use of fishing subsidies. Yet while the UN imposed a December 2019 deadline on itself to act, the deadline is almost certain to be missed. That's going to come as a disappointment to the zero people who actually expect the UN to do something. Some governments are already moving to tackle the overfishing crisis by calling for temporary moratoriums on fishing. That means fishing stops for weeks, months, or years to allow stocks to replenish themselves. But that also needs to come with enforcement, because, surprise, some people ignore the laws. Governments should also end the types of fishing subsidies that lead to overfishing. Another option is for companies themselves to create sustainably grown and sourced seafood. For example, one California-based startup called Blue Nalu is planning to grow mercury-free seafood cells in labs to ensure a steady supply chain that doesn't contribute to overfishing. In a similar vein, non-fishing businesses can help. The Ibero Star Hotels in the Dominican Republic have committed to only purchasing fish from environmentally conscious fisheries. They've banned 34 species of sea creatures from their menus, but even this is only partway to their goal because it's hard for them to trace where all the food comes from. And a report published this year in Science Advances found that instead of focusing on individual fish populations, scientists and governments should instead focus on entire ecosystems, which would include the smallest plants and creatures in a given ocean or sea. According to the co-author of the report, detecting overfishing at an ecosystem level will help avoid many of the impacts we have when managing fished species on a population-by-population -population basis, and holds promise for detecting major shifts in ecosystem and fisheries productivities much more quickly. So what do you think about overfishing? And are you ready for a fish sandwich at Long John Silver's? Leave your comments below. And remember, America Uncovered is supported mainly by viewers. Visit patreon.com slash America Uncovered. Contribute a dollar or more per episode. We rely on your support to help us keep making great episodes. Once again, I'm Chris Chappell. Thanks for watching America Uncovered.